Most inverse functions have the interesting, even definitive characteristic of undoing each other. For example, if I had a function that doubled its argument and another, its inverse, that halved it, when I feed the output of one function into the input of the other, I'd get back what I started with. Here's how we'd show the functions nested in an expression. The output of the first function becomes the input of the second. When asked what's half of twice 817, you probably realized that half and twice cancel each other out, and the answer is 817. You didn't even have to do any math. We can see the same type of behavior with trig functions and their inverses, but there's a catch, so please pay attention. Trigonometry instructors love to spring this on their students. The expression sine pi over 6 evaluates to a number between negative 1 and 1. Of course, this is the domain for the arcsine function, so sine pi over 6 can be an argument for arcsine like this. So using our memory aid, this expression means the angle whose sine is the sine of pi over 6. Well, the angle whose sine and the sine of the angle cancel out just like doubling and halving. So the answer is pi over 6. The angle whose sine is the sine of pi over 6 is pi over 6. So in general, you might expect the angle whose sine is the sine of x to always be x, but this isn't always the case with inverse trig functions, and that's where the tricky part arises. What's the angle whose sine is the sine of 5 pi over 6? Well, we want to say 5 pi over 6, but this is outside the range of the arcsine function. By convention, arcsine only returns angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. The circles from the last video are great memory aids to remember the inverse trig function ranges. The sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half, and the arcsine of 1 half is pi over 6. So the arcsine of sine 5 pi over 6 equals pi over 6, not 5 pi over 6. Similarly, the arc cosine of cosine pi over 2 is pi over 2, because pi over 2 is in the range of the arc cosine function. But the arc cosine of cosine 5 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4, because the cosine of 5 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2, and the arc cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2 is 3 pi over 4, not 5 pi over 4. Just remember that the inverse trig functions always return an angle in their range, and these circle images can help you see the range for each. Okay, that's the lecture information I couldn't fit into TR-23. Now for some practice problems, but first, a warm-up exercise. Which inverse trig functions, arc sine or arc cosine, can return negative angles, and under what circumstances? Let's consider the inverse cosine first. When inverse cosine, or arc cosine, is referenced, please see the circle in your head. The domain for arc cosine is negative 1 to 1, values on the x-axis as shown in blue. The range is the set of angles between 0 and pi radians as shown on the yellow semicircle. All of these angles are non-negative, so arc cosine never returns negative angles. Here's the circle to envision for inverse sine, or arc sine. It also has a domain from negative 1 to 1, values on the y-axis as shown in red. The range is the set of angles from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. This range does include negative angles for arguments from negative 1 up to, but not including, 0, because the arc sine of 0 is 0 and 0 isn't negative. So that's the answer. The answer to the question is the arc sine function can return negative angles. Here are some inverse expressions for you to evaluate. I've jumbled up the negative 1 superscript and the arc prefix so you get accustomed to both, but they mean the exact same thing. We'll do the first three one at a time, then you can pause and do the last six on your own. What's the inverse sine of 0? The angle whose sine is 0. For inverse sine, picture the left circle. The argument is on the red vertical line. 0 happens to be right in the middle. Read across, angle 0, radians. You should know the common angles in radians. See TR-06 for a review. Number 2, the arc cosine of 0. The angle whose cosine is 0. For inverse cosine, envision the right circle. The argument is on the blue horizontal line. Again, 0 is right in the middle. Read up, 
angled pi over 2 radians. Number 3, the arc sine of square root of 2 over 2. The angle whose sine is square root of 2 over 2. You should recognize this as the medium value associated with the pi over 4 angles that bisect each quadrant. And the answer is pi over 4 radians. Pause now to answer the last six on your own. I'll show the answers all at once in a few seconds. Now, can you evaluate these expressions without the memory aids? You should still have the memory aids in your head. This is good practice. Pause if you like, and I'll show the answers. Finally, let's try some composite functions, which are nested functions with the output of the innermost being used as the input for the outermost. If the outermost function is an inverse function, then the result will be an angle, the angle whose. And if the outermost function is a regular trig function, then the result will be a unitless ratio. Pause if you like. I'll show the answers, and that will be the end of this video.